This is one of the best video editing apps available right now for both Android and iOS devices, and it's a great CapCut alternative. The app is called VN, and it's perfect for beginners. So if you don't know how to edit a video, don't worry, I've got you covered. By the end of this video, you're gonna be able to edit your first video in VN. So head down to the description, download and install the app, and follow along. Now I'm gonna use my iPad today because it fills up the screen, but if you're following along on your phone, everything's gonna be the same, it's just not gonna be as wide. When you open the app, the first thing you need to do is create a project. And while you can start with a pre-made template, which you can access by clicking on the search icon, for the purpose of this video, we're gonna start from scratch. And to do that, you're gonna tap on the plus icon in the bottom right-hand corner. Next thing you wanna do is tap on new project. When you tap on new project, you need to go in and find the clips that you wanna import into VN. Now you don't have to add all of your clips at this time, but you do need to add some of them. So let's go ahead and get started and choose two of them and import them into VN. Now VN is automatically going to import your clips into the timeline. So before we go any further, let me show you around so you have an understanding of what this layout is. And if your layout does not look like this, go up to the top left, click on this layout icon and you can choose how you want VN to lay out, but I want something that looks more traditional because it says how I grew up learning how to edit video. Now, at the bottom, you have your tools. You can scroll all the way over to the right and scroll back to the left. You can tap on these as you need them, and we'll get into some of these a little bit later. And above that, you have your timeline where your video goes, any images or additional videos you wanna put on top, text, music, etc., And we're gonna get into those a little bit later as well. And then of course, on top is the actual video that you're going to be working with. Now on top of that, you see this little icon here with original next to it. If you tap on that, that's gonna be your video settings. By default, VN should adjust your settings based on the video that you imported. However, if you wanna change this, this is where you can go through and you can change the ratio of what this video is going to look like. But if you know how you shot it and it's the correct ratio, you can leave it on original, or if this is going on to YouTube, you can tap on the YouTube icon, which is 16 by nine. Now for HDR, I would leave that off for now. We can get into this in another video. And frames per second when editing, I would leave that alone as well, unless you know what you're doing. And once you confirm everything's set up the way it needs to be, tap on the check mark, and then scroll over to the very end of your video track. I'm gonna enlarge this here. I'm zooming with two fingers. You'll notice at the very end, VN puts a little video clip. They do this by default. If you tap on it, simply hit delete and it's gone. When it comes to editing, if you're not familiar with editing on an app, you need to learn how to expand and contract the timeline. And I'm doing this by using two fingers and I'm expanding and I'm contracting using two fingers. So I'm going to expand this and go all the way back to the beginning and I'm gonna keep expanding it. And I want you to look down at the bottom where the audio track is, that's underneath the video. You can see here that there's no audio until I start to speak right there. This is a really easy way to edit. You can look to the parts where there's no audio and you can delete them. Now, there are two ways to do this. Number one, I can tap on the clip and I can grab the handle on the end and I can pull it, I am pressing and holding, all the way back until my mouth starts to open. I'm gonna tap off. And now if I hit play, the video is gonna start playing exactly where, well, exactly where I hope it's gonna start playing, which is right here. But let me show you another way to do that. And to undo what I just did, go over to the right and you can see the undo arrow. So I'm gonna tap on that and it goes back to where we started. Now the second way to cut this, Take your finger, move it along the timeline until the part where you wanna cut it, which is about right there where my mouth is starting to open. And the idea here is, is when somebody clicks play on my YouTube video, I wanna start speaking immediately. I don't wanna waste the viewer's time. So when they hit play, I wanna start speaking and I'm gonna get right into it. So I move the playhead here exactly where I want it to be, which is right there. And if you look down at your tools at the bottom, you see the scissor icon, which is split. If I tap on split, it has now cut that clip into two pieces. I'm gonna make sure the clip that I do not want is highlighted and I can either tap it again and tap on delete there or I can make sure it's highlighted and tap on delete down at the bottom. There are two places to do that. 
Then I'm going to go along and I'm going to play my video and I'm going to listen to my video and I'm going to find the parts that I want to cut out. And I can see just visually here by looking at the audio down here at the bottom that I stop speaking right here. And I know that I can cut it right there. And I'm going to go to where I start speaking again, to where my mouth is moving. I'm going to cut it right there. And what's left is this clip in the middle that I do not want. I'm going to delete it. So what I'm going to do now is go through all of my video and get rid of the clips that I don't want. And what I'm left with is a finished video. And again, you can expand the clips and you can contract the clips. And while we have them contracted here, let's say you want to reorder these. Let's say you want this one to be number one. Really easy to do. All you have to do is press it and hold it and drag it over to where you want it to go. You can even move it to the end if you want. You can put it wherever you want. Press it and hold it and put it exactly where you want it to go. And if you move it in the wrong space or you did something wrong, again, you can go back to the undo arrow over on the right. You can tap on that and it's going to undo everything. Let's put this right here. Now, once you've gone through and you've edited all your clips and everything is in the right place, you're gonna go back through and you're going to add any additional imagery or videos or text or audio. And we're gonna get into all of those uh, here in a moment, starting with how you would add a picture overlay or a video overlay or even a sticker. So in order to do that, you would tap on this layer, which says tap to add sticker or PNP, which is picture in picture. If you tap on that, you can add a sticker if you want. And there are all kinds of stickers that you can choose from. Some of them are animated. I'm just gonna give you an example here. If you wanna tap on one, simply tap on it. I'm gonna close this down, use your finger, drag it, use two fingers, size it down, put it where you want it to go. And you can see that it put it right here in my timeline. So I can extend this if I wanted to. I can press and hold, I can move this around if I want to. I could also tap on motion and by adding motion, this is an animation in or an animation out. So if I wanted to scale this in, I could do that. And I could come in faster if I wanted. If I wanna do an animation out, I tap on out. And, was mistake. and I approve it by hitting this check mark. And now I have a little subscribe button that pops up. Now I can still tap on this and I can use my fingers. I can enlarge it. I can move it around or I can delete it. But what if we don't want to add a sticker? What if we want to add a photo or another video? You do it exactly how you added the first videos. You tap here, you tap on photos, and it's going to go into your gallery and you can choose. If you have your recents video, so depending on how you organize everything, you can go in and find everything there. But let's just say I want to add this video clip right here. I can use my finger and I can move it around. I can pinch it, I can zoom it. I could make it full screen if I wanted to. I'm pinching and zooming everything. Everything is just pinching and zooming with my finger. So I can put it there. I can press it. I can hold it. I can move it around. I can add an animation in or an animation out, which I'm not going to do. I can also tap on the volume and I can mute this track because there's volume on this particular video and I only want my voice to show up. So for this particular video that I laid on top, I wanna to mute that audio. Alternatively, I could turn it down depending on what it was. So I'm gonna mute it and I'm gonna hit the check icon and now that audio is muted. So that's how you're gonna add any sort of a video or image overlay or sticker. But I don't want this, so I'm gonna tap on it and I'm going to delete it. Now you might be wondering what these little plus icons are between each clip. This is where you add a transition. What a transition is, is it is a movement that gets you from one clip to another clip. And let me show you how that works. You tap on the little icon. You can choose what happens from clip to clip. You can also choose how fast or slow the transition happens. Now, because this is a YouTube video and I'm sitting in the exact same position, I'm not going to use a visual transition where it's going to move from one spot to the next. It doesn't make sense to do that. When it comes to editing, you want to be thoughtful with everything that you do. And if I had two clips that were in two different places, let's say I'm sitting here 
and the next clip is I'm outside, it might make sense to add some sort of a fade transition or fade to white, fade to black, etc. But when you're sitting in the exact same spot, that does not make sense. So you're left with two options, really. Option number one is you just leave a hard cut. So if you were to play it, it's just gonna go from one clip to the next. That's not going live soon enough. You need to get up. That would be a hard cut, a jump cut, some people call it. And there's two ways to deal with this. One, you can leave it just like this. Or number two, you can tap on the second clip. You can go down to your tool menu at the bottom, tap on crop, use your fingers. I try to enlarge it maybe by 15 or 20% and try to keep your eyes in the same place that they were. So if my eyes started here, I'm gonna do my best to keep my eyes in the same spot. Reason being, and by the way, when you're finished here, tap on the check mark. Reason being is because when you're editing, you wanna do your best to get your eyes, the eye line, to be in the same position between clips. And that looks like it's a little bit off, and again, this isn't gonna be perfect, but you get the idea. And by lining up the eyes, it makes this transition, the hard cut transition, go a lot smoother. So keep that in mind if you're using hard cuts that you can zoom in and you can zoom out. So now you know how to add transitions and how to do jump cuts and how to zoom in. Let me show you how easy it is to add text. All you need to do is go to the tap to add subtitle track, tap on that. VN comes complete with a ton of pre-made templates. So if you wanna use something pre-made, you can use something pre-made and you can edit those once you pull them in. What we're going to do is we're gonna go up to the top here. It allows you to add a heading, add a subheading, or add a little bit of body text. I'm going to add a heading. And right away, it put text into my timeline, open up the keyboard, and it's allowing me to add text. Now, I know what I say here. I say five mistakes new live streamers make. So I'm gonna type that in. I'm just gonna type in five mistakes. And you can see VN already put it here in the timeline. I can adjust the length of it. I can press it, I can hold it, I can move it around, and I can also change the appearance. And in order to do that, go back down to your tools, and you can see you have font, font size, you have colors, format, spacing, style, etc. So let's start on font. You can scroll through the fonts. You can find one that you like. Tap on that, tap on the check. And if you want to keep editing, you can keep going or you can tap on the check mark on the right. So I'm going to keep adding here. Moving on over, you have color. So if I want to make this yellow or blue, I can do that. They also have some pre-made templates here. I can go through these if I want or something with a background. So when I'm finished, I'm going to go over to the check mark I'm gonna tap that. Now I can go through my entire video and I can add as much text as I want and I can even change the style for every line of text that I have. You can also animate it to come in and out. And you see other things here like keyframing. We'll get into keyframing in another video that's a little bit more advanced. For this, we're gonna to stick to some basics. So let's tap on the text, go to motion. Do we want it to zoom in? Yeah, let's zoom in. Let's make it do it fast. Five mistakes and let's go out. Let's slide down and make it fast. Now for the slide feature, you see that there's four little dots. Each one that you tap is gonna send the arrow in a different direction. So if you want it to go to the left or to the right, you tap until the arrow goes in the direction that you want the text to go in. So I want mine to go down, so I'm gonna tap until the arrow points down and I'm gonna adjust the speed. Then I'm gonna tap on the check mark. Now you can put your text at the beginning in some sort of an intro, you can put it at the end, you can put it throughout your video. But again, this is something that you probably wanna use sparingly something you just wanna to use to bring attention to something or just really drive a point home. You don't have to put text for everything. You can use it as an effect to really drive a point home. Like I'm saying five mistakes, so I want five mistakes to show up. So then once you have your video put together, you have your text put in, maybe you have some stickers or a picture in picture or a video overlay. If you want to change how your video looks, you wanna change the color, you wanna do some basic color correction, we're gonna tap on filter. Now filters work just like Instagram or any other social media platform filter. You tap on it and you get a filter and they have lots and lots and lots of different filters. And if you find a filter that has this grid going across, that means it is for paid versions only. So if you're using this for free, you wanna make sure to find a filter that does not have that grid. And if you find a filter where you think, yeah, that looks good, but it's too much, you can go to the intensity, 
and you can dial the intensity all the way back. So if you want just a little bit of filter, you can do that. Alternatively, I'm gonna put original here, you can go to adjust and you can do everything manually. So if I wanna adjust my exposure, make it a little bit brighter, I could do that. If I wanna add some contrast, I could do that. Some brightness if I wanted to, some saturation, so on and so forth. You have all of the tools here, you can do a little bit of sharpening, but again, this is something where less is more. If you don't know what you're doing here, I would say very, very subtle moves. Don't go overboard because it's easy to ruin your video. So this is something that you wanna use sparingly and I don't recommend you go wild until you kind of wrap your head around how to make things look good. So if you wanna reset this, it has a reset icon down at the bottom. It resets everything. You can go back to filter, choose a filter that you like and then dial that filter back. And you can also come in and adjust a little bit. Say, so, okay, my video's just a little bit dark. So I'm gonna bring up the brightness, just maybe plus two or something like that. And if you wanna add some sound effects or music, it has a music track. All you have to do is tap on the music icon and you can choose what do you wanna do. And by the way, you can also do a voiceover. So if you wanna do a voiceover, you can tap on record. I can cover this in another video as well, showing you just how to do voiceovers. You can add sound effects by tapping on sound effects and going over to sound effects. They have a lot of different options that you could add and you should be safe uh, from copyright issues by using the sound effects. I haven't heard of anybody having problems with these, but you can go through and you can add them as you need them. You can also add music. Now, this is where I don't recommend using music that comes with any of the editing apps because sometimes licenses get sold and it becomes a problem. I actually made a video about this. I will recommend some safe music that you can add. I'll put links to that down in the description below, including a free service that me and my brother Nick Nimmin have called Creator Mix. But for the sake of adding music, you can add your own music here. You can extract from a video, from iTunes. If you create a new album, that's where you're gonna put your own music and then import that music. Now, everything we've gone over up to this point is exactly what you need to know to edit your first video. But what happens when you do all of this and you're ready to export your video, to finalize your video, what do you do? It's really easy. Go up to the top right-hand corner, tap on this blue upload icon, and it's gonna give you your export settings. Now, it might load up like this by default and say auto. And if you don't know the camera settings that you started with or what you want, this might be the best setting for you to start with. You can export it based on what VN believes is the best. Alternatively, just so you know, if you want to export the audio only, maybe you wanna use it for a podcast, you can select that and it's not going to export your video, it's only going to export your audio. It'll just give you an audio file. So if you don't know what you need, auto might be the best. But if you do know what you need, you can tap on manual. Now you can see at the top here, it says export settings, 1080p, 30 frames per second. That's what this particular video was shot in. You can look at your camera settings in your phone or the actual camera to see what quality and frame rate you're shooting in. I recommend whatever you imported, that's what you export. So if you imported 1080p, make sure your resolution is 1080p. If you shot it in 2K, you could export in 2K, or 4K if you shot it in 4K. And if you know the frame rate, I'd recommend keeping it the same frame rate. Now, average bit rate. This is going to be the actual quality that it encodes. And then you can see as I increase the quality, it increases the file size down at the bottom, and it increases it quite a bit. So I would recommend starting with what it recommends and export it and see what it looks like from there. And if you need to export it again, bump it up slowly because you don't wanna end up with a file size that's too large. But you might have to experiment here a little bit to see what the sweet spot is for your video. And once you have everything set, simply tap on export and it's gonna take everything that you made, all the edits that you made, and essentially compress them into a single video file that you can then upload to YouTube.